All right, welcome on into the Wolverine Recruiting Show. I am Clayton Safey with EJ Holland. We're going to break down some of the top storylines surrounding Michigan football recruiting this week. We're brought to you by Lewis Jewelers and Manscaped. And make sure to check us out at thewolverine.com for full coverage. Use the promo code BLUE60 for all of our premium content. You can join us on our message board and interact with thousands of Michigan fans. Um, EJ, let's talk about this recruiting department that continues to evolve, continues to expand here this offseason. Um, obviously, just a quick rundown. Matt Dudek left for Mississippi State at basically the same time that Michigan hired Courtney Morgan as director of player personnel. Then Jim Harbaugh promotes Ashawn Larkins, uh, who was an analyst last season, actually coached the safeties because Bob Shoup did not coach the, uh, the safeties on the field due to a personal issue. So he's been promoted now to uh, director of recruiting. Uh, Michigan also making some moves and getting kind of proactive and ahead of the game here with branding just the other day, hiring Sidney Sims, who is going to be um, strategic communications and branding, which is going to be big for name, image, and likeness, uh, which is coming around the corner here. And then uh, Christina DeRyder, uh, who has been hired as on campus recruiting coordinator. Uh, so obviously going to do a ton with visits, which are opening up in June, by the way. So some big moves by Michigan here to kind of beef up this recruiting department. Uh, what were your thoughts? Because you've been kind of clamoring about this for a while, even going back to, you know, when you came in and joined this beat, you're like, I've covered Texas. I know what it's like at Ohio State, uh, where these are, you know, recruiting departments that have people doing every you know covering every little aspect of a recruitment michigan finally kind of catching up in that regard yeah like you said uh when i first got on this beat i was just really appalled at the lack of a recruiting department i mean i've said it before it was like dudek and some gophers and it was just like it was a really small operation for such a major program uh in michigan now jim harbaugh is having a recruiting department that resembles that of its fellow blue blood programs like texas like ohio state like notre dame um and, and that was needed all along you know you can point to the field and say you know well michigan needs to win and that's obvious nobody's saying that Michigan doesn't need to win but you have to fix recruiting as well um and there was a problem with the way recruiting was operating uh, I feel like, you know, if Michigan can show some semblance of its older self this fall, then recruiting will pick up. And with the added recruiting staffers, I feel like recruiting will get better. And that leads to easier wins on the field. Um, the organization of this recruiting department does resemble that of Ohio State and Texas. If you recall like i said you know i was on the texas beat tom herman was at ohio state so he took that urban meyer recruiting department model and implemented it at texas ryan day took the urban meyer model and implemented it at ohio state or kept it rolling at ohio state michigan has now a similar model they have a director of player personnel which is courtney morgan they have a new director of recruiting the sean markins and both of those guys can kind of coexist in heading up um, recruitments. Both of those guys are going to have similar responsibilities in terms of having personal relationships with recruits, being involved on Zoom calls, being extra involved on official and unofficial visits. They are both considered relationship builders. Courtney Morgan has ties throughout the West, whether it's the Pacific Northwest, California, uh, Nevada, Texas, uh, Larkins is more known throughout the Southeast, specifically in Alabama. Um, so both of those guys are the relationship builders that you didn't have. Uh, I talked a, little, a lot about Matty Dudek and his strengths as far as being more of an administrative uh, person, more of an overseer, a guy that really excelled at scheduling visits, making sure recruits were having fun when they were on campus, keeping families informed, uh, keeping guys on track academically, helping uh, Jim Harbaugh schedule his uh, recruiting calls and balance his coaching duties. So Dudek excelled in that area, but he wasn't a true relationship builder. He wasn't a true um, off-campus, um, or I'm sorry, on-campus recruiter. Um, now you have two of them in Courtney Morgan and Larkins. Larkins will handle more of the day-to-day -day, um, and 
you know, Courtney Morgan will handle a lot more of the big picture, but both will be very, very actively and personally involved in individual recruitments. Now you still have the need for a administrative role to make sure those visits are set to make sure the coaches aren't getting off track with either of their responsibilities to make sure that the, the official visits are a big splash, especially with a crucial June coming up. Uh, and so you don't have any more academic paperwork snafus like with Xavier Worthy. <laughs> you need that administrative role. And that's why they uh, brought in Christina De Ruyter, uh over from Vanderbilt. And, you know, she has experience at a high academic program that plays in a top level conference, you know, again, coming over from Vanderbilt, which plays in the SEC, which has great academics. So should be a pretty smooth transition over to Michigan. And so she will kind of head up uh, that part of the recruiting department. And then you have Sydney Sims, who, like you said, you know, branding's becoming more uh, of a deciding factor for a lot of recruits. You saw Rayshon Benny, for example, last cycle say it was one of his uh, key deciding factors. You have Walter Nolan, who's mentioned it a ton, name, image, likeness uh, is going to be huge, especially at a program like Michigan that has the big house, that has the stadiums sold out you know, every weekend there's a game at home um, and, and just has that Michigan brand that's kind of worldwide. Uh, so overall, I feel like it's a, it's a really smart move to have someone and it's kind of a look ahead at, at what's to come. And then you have other staffers that, you know, uh, are still part of the recruiting department, like Tony Jones, who is now the director of high school relations, Jared McElwain, who worked under Maddie Dudek, who's now the director of scouting and will handle a lot of the film side of things for coaches. And you have the analysts that are way more involved in recruiting than they were previously. Guys like Ryan Osborne, who has taken sole control of recruiting edge rushers, uh, Joe Stabb, Steve Pisula, uh, and, and Kyle Deban, who they brought in to assist with offensive line recruiting. So they, they have all these people now actively involved in recruiting when, like I said, you know, it was just this time a year ago, it was just Dudek, McElwain, and, and maybe a few others that were, you know, kind of doing some of the, the minor grunt work. Now you have a full functioning recruiting staff. And so I'm excited to see what type of results, you know, it yields. But I, I do think people need to keep into perspective that Michigan is coming off a terrible year. There have been so many changes um, as far as the coaching staff, not just the recruiting department. So I don't think you're going to see the benefits of all these moves in the recruiting department until maybe next cycle. And even then, a lot is going to go back to what people are most concerned about, which is winning. Yeah, and it, it is interesting with some of these moves because you kind of saw it when, um, and I know you weren't on this beat necessarily, but when Jim Harbaugh was hired, uh, ahead of the 2015 season, there were jobs like, you know, so-and-so would tweet like, all right, I just got hired by Michigan. There were people coming in. There were tons of analysts. There was Gwendolyn Bush, who was in charge of on-campus recruiting. He had some of these roles, but then kind of as people would leave and, you know, get a get a bigger job for themselves or whatever, they just kind of weren't replacing uh, some of those positions. And, you know, I think that's what is kind of interesting because there was that lull in the middle and that was about the time that Matt Dudek came in ahead of the 2017 season when the structure of that recruiting department changed and obviously for the worse I think Matt Dudek did an okay job at times but uh you know you've mentioned that he didn't get quite the help that he needed he didn't have these you know people to focus on specific things uh but Michigan getting ahead of the branding I think is huge you mentioned some of the bigger time recruits that uh you know if they go to Michigan, Michigan has the largest living alumni base in the entire world. Uh, you know, it's it's easy to brand that, but you got to have somebody to be there and actually be in charge of that and say, like, all right, you have this great platform at Michigan. How can we grow your personal brand? Because soon these kids are going to be able to make money off of social media. They're going to be able to be influencers. It's going to be fascinating to watch. But um, Michigan saying, hey, we're serious about this. I think that's a huge move and a huge step in the right direction for that recruiting department. So, yeah, and, and I think you wrote this yesterday or the day before. Kudos to Jim Harbaugh and company for doing this, you know, making these moves, even if it's a little bit too late um, in terms of the fact that they should have done this a few years ago, but it's still the right move today, in my opinion. Um, let's talk satellite camps. Very exciting. 
uh, in a way because Michigan, they didn't invent satellite camps, and Jim Harbaugh will be the first to tell you that. He said he was going to satellite camps back in the 70s as a kid and then in high school in the early 80s. Uh, and, you know, that was kind of part of his argument for them back a few years ago when there was a bunch of controversy, the fact that they've been around for a long time. But Michigan in 2015, 2016, 2017 going to, you know, what was it, 30 satellite camps one year. They've kind of been on the forefront of this. Uh, they are starting to schedule some of those as now, you know, the dead period is going to lift in June. We're going to be at a couple. We're going to be covering some. It's going to be fascinating to see this new Michigan staff in action. Your thoughts on the Wolverines here as they start to schedule some of those satellite camps? Yeah, firstly, it looked like Michigan wasn't going to do any satellite camps. And then, you know, as the uh, recruiting department kind of got overhauled, um, they said, yeah, we're going to do satellite camps. And so now they've set uh, a ton of satellite camps here recently and are still in the process of uh, scheduling some others. Um, I actually covered a couple of Jim Harbaugh satellite camps in Dallas, uh, as you see here, he's probably in Baltimore <laughs> rocking the Ray Lewis jersey. That was, but... a, that was the summer where he wore a different jersey at every camp based on the yeah. location. So I assume this was probably, yeah, out east somewhere in the Baltimore area. He was rocking a Derek Hall in Texas Rangers jersey uh, when I covered him in Dallas uh, at one of his camps. I think I did it two years in a row. So it was a really fun time to, to see him out there. So I'm interested to see if he's personally going to uh, get back to, you know, going out to different satellite camps and everything. You know, obviously Harbaugh has kind of reinvented himself from a person personality standpoint. So uh, not sure which staffers are going to be at which camps yet or if Harbaugh is going to be there or not. Uh, but Michigan is scheduled to attend a, a couple in their own home state in Michigan. They have one uh, scheduled, actually the first satellite camp they're scheduled to partake in is at Eastern Michigan on June 1st. Uh, so they'll be doing a combo camp with EMU and then they will head up uh, a little north of Grand Rapids to Ferris State uh, on June 3rd. And that camp will be with Sound Mind, Sound Body uh, and Ferris State and a few other schools and will feature some, you know, pretty big targets. Sound Mind, Sound Bodies bringing in uh, most of their crew, and that includes five-star Michigan commit Will Johnson. So it'll be cool to get to see Will um, take part in some drills in front of the uh, Michigan coaching staff. And then, you know, aside from that, they are kind of expanding um, their their radius as far as, you know, where they're going. Uh, like you said, Harbaugh obviously did a, a big national tour back in the day. I'm not sure they'll hit as many satellite camps this summer, but they are going out of region, uh, going out to California. They are doing one in Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, obviously Courtney Morgan has a lot of ties out there. So, uh, you know, I'm sure Michigan's going to have more satellite camps uh, out in, in, in California. They have one in the Pacific Northwest. Michigan's been offering more and more guys out in the state of Washington. Uh, Darius Clemens is a big target in the state of Oregon. So they'll be doing that one uh, in late June. They have another satellite camp lined up for Atlanta. Obviously uh, recruiting the Peach State has been a big focus uh, for this staff uh, with, with the changes they've made. Um, Nashville has become a bigger area and remains a bigger area, especially with Steve Klingscale on staff who uh, led the way for Kentucky's push in Nashville. Uh, they will have a, a satellite camp there. So those are a, a handful of camps that are currently set, and I expect the schedule to keep expanding. Like I said, Michigan didn't really look like it was going to be involved in any satellite camps, and now that they're starting to pop up um, as far as getting on the schedule for some. So uh, I feel like you know, you'll know you see a lot more set, and it's exciting to see Michigan back out on the, the satellite camp circuit. Yeah, there's no doubt, and, and the the rules have changed a little bit since they did, and I said 30. I think it was in the 40s because they had you know a couple different groups at times traveling. I mean, what a budget they probably had. I remember them talking about like eating meals in the car on the way to the next camp. They'd be doing multiple a day um, and things like that. Uh, so you can only do 10 days of camp, so you can be at multiple camps on those days, but only 10 days of camping, and then I think that includes – the two camps that Michigan are going to is going to host June 6th and June 13th at uh, the Michigan facilities, which I thought was cool as well. Uh, they put out the flyer for that $20 uh, 
for high school kids. Um, and I saw a bunch of Detroit area high school coaches tweeting about that, like, thank you, Michigan, for making that super affordable. So obviously that seems to be a good move as well. What do you expect to see? Uh, you know, do you expect to see some targets coming in for the camp, uh, the two camps uh, at Michigan as well? Um, yeah, I think you'll you'll have, you know, you might not have the big targets. You might not have Dante Moore out there throwing, but you will have some, some intriguing targets. I think you'll see some of the on-campus camps result in a, a couple of offers, but I think it's nice that uh, like you said, Michigan's making it affordable. They are having on-campus camps, even though they are closed uh, to the public and to the media. Uh, they are going to be evaluating some kids in the big house. So it should be uh, a fun start to June. Those first, you know, I think 15 days are going to be really, really busy for Michigan as they get to different satellite camps and, and they host the two on-campus camps. And remember, Michigan still has uh, official visits lined up for June 4th, June 11th, and June 18th as well. So it's going to be a really, really busy month. Yep, it's going to be exciting to follow. Uh, let's talk about Steve Klinkscale uh, and what he has done on the recruiting trail since taking over uh, as the defensive passing game coordinator and defensive backs coach. But before we do, we want to remind everyone that support for this show is brought to you by Manscaped, which is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers premium engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide, including us. Um, we have an exclusive offer for our viewers and listeners, 20% off plus free shipping with the code 20 go blue at manscaped.com. That's two zero G O B L U E at manscaped.com. And they sent us the lawnmower 3.0 perfect package. Uh, to try out EJ what are you thinking so far what, what do you like about it yeah it's a great deal um, you know I got the whole travel package including the lawnmower 3.0 it also comes with a lot of uh, goodies to keep you fresh below the belt on the go I was out on in Colorado seeing Connor Jones last week and uh, you know uh, the camp got a little heated out there it was pretty hot out in uh, in the Denver area. Then I went bouldering and free climbing and cave dwelling. And so, you know, I had to keep things fresh uh, below the belt. And that goodie bag also includes uh, some athletic underwear, which keeps you cool in the heat. And uh, like I said, keeps you uh, smelling fresh below the belt and, and you can shave on the go. They have some precision uh, razors that are safe for your family jewels. And so they keep me uh, nice and clean and fresh on the go and can keep you clean and fresh on the go too. Yeah, and I know our coworker Chris Ballas has not taken off his Manscaped shirt either that they gave us since he got it, which was I think a month ago, so that's a little weird, but the promo code is 20 go blue at manscaped.com, 20-G-O-B-L-U-E at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping. Let's talk Steve Klinkscale and what he has done on the recruiting trail here. Uh, obviously, was a big hire four days, just four days after Mo Linguist decided to take the head coaching job at Buffalo. He's got to learn the defense. He's got to learn, you know, who his players are. And I know he did recruit a lot of the players on the Michigan uh, roster already in that defensive backfield. So that's obviously big because he recruited well in the Detroit area, in the Midwest, while he was at Kentucky. But he's also got to get connected with some of these recruits. He obviously had a pre-existing relationship with Will Johnson, Michigan's five-star corner commit. Um, you know, he's got to make some inroads with some other key targets. What are you hearing on his efforts so far when it comes to recruiting? Yeah, well, starting off with the commits, you have two big ones um, in the secondary with Will Johnson and Cody Jones. Like you said, Clink has a pre-existing relationship with Will. Um, you know, I know Will was pretty upset after the Mo Linguist uh, departure, uh, but Clink was the first to offer him and uh, they have a good relationship. Clink also has a great relationship with his father, Dion. Uh, so keeping Will happy is going to be key. Uh, you know, other schools have not stopped recruiting Will Johnson, especially with official visits opening up. So, you know, Clink's had a couple of conversations with Will since taking over the job. I believe they've been on the phone three times uh, since then. So uh, big things just going to be keeping Will happy, making sure he doesn't uh, take any of the visits, especially with how, you know, uh, the the linguist situation happened so sudden and how uh, both he and Cody Jones were a little 
uh, upset by it. And, and speaking of Cody Jones, I think it was encouraging. I spoke to his uh, dad yesterday, and he told me they were still fully committed to Michigan, fully invested in coming in for an official visit on June 18th. Kind of the same situation as Will, though. He had a really great relationship with Mo Linguist, with Cody. Uh, he didn't have the ties that Will did. Will obviously being a legacy recruit, an in-state recruit. Uh, Cody committed in large part because of Linguist. So I think it's positive that his dad said that. His dad also told me they like Clink. And so other schools are still pushing for Cody as well. Um, but it looks like Michigan will get the first crack and um, and Clink has made it clear that he wants him in the class. Looking at other targets elsewhere, I think one to definitely keep an eye on is Jeremiah Caldwell. He was committed to Clink at Kentucky out of Belleville. Um, in-state kid, four-star kid, Michigan offered right before Clink uh, made his way over to Michigan. So with Clink and Bellamy on staff, uh, I think Michigan can repair some of the relationships that uh, fell by the wayside at Belleville with that high school coaching staff and potentially flip Caldwell from Kentucky. Um, Clink has been working very, very hard on four-star cornerback Miles Pollard, who was considered a Michigan lean before Clink got here. He loved Clink at Kentucky. Uh, there was a re- that was the reason Kentucky was in the top group for Miles Pollard. So I feel like uh, out of all the recruits um, on the board right now on the defensive back board, Miles Pollard is the most happy. Uh, with Clink scale. So I feel like uh, he's a kid that could definitely still end up at Michigan. Uh, Jaden Gould is a prospect slated to come in for an official visit on June 18th, four-star cornerback out of New Jersey. Um, he's been kind of on and off with Michigan as, as Michigan's made so many changes uh, with its defensive back coaches. But uh, if Michigan pushes for him, I think that he could easily end up in the class uh, Clink has a previous uh, relationship with him, so I feel like, uh, you know, again, if Michigan makes a push for Gould, he could still end up in the class as well. So he's been kind of hitting up some of the usual suspects. There haven't been any real uh, new defensive back offers, but those are some of the calls he's made early on in his tenure at Michigan. What about Dylan Tatum, who seems to be kind of nearing a decision here between Michigan and Michigan State? Um you know, didn't necessarily have as good of a relationship with Steve Klinkscale before, obviously seemed to be leaning towards Michigan. What do you think at this point? I think it's 50-50. I mean, obviously with Bellamy uh, being his high school coach at West Bloomfield, that plays a big role. I think Dylan loves Michigan State and the idea of being there, uh, Will Johnson in a sense. Uh, His family actually uh, grew up Michigan State fans, so that's something to watch as well. He didn't have the best relationship uh, with clean scale in the past. So I think there's some fences to be mended there uh, a little bit, but with Bellamy on, on staff and we've said it before, it's going to be hard for Dylan to just call up Bellamy and tell him, no, I'm not going to Michigan. I'm going to your biggest rival. Um, but I, I think that race has tightened up. I'm not sure the clean scale hire was, um, you know, really big for that recruitment. There you have it. That's our show. Uh, Tons of intel on Michigan football recruiting. We'll do it again next week. In between then uh, and now, join us at thewolverine.com. Use the promo code BLUE60 to get 60 days of our premium content absolutely free, and we'll see you next week.